this time, let's proceed to science and technology in modern time, modern times. In the modern times, there is not the discovery of the telephone, of course. Um, Alexander Gra Graham Bell in invented the telephone. Constructed this prototype telephone in 1875, the device consists of a coil of wire, a magnetic arm, and a taut membrane. Parang sobrang napaka, mapapansin nyo that the image uh, or the, the prototype of Alexander Graham Bell's telephone ay sobrang napaka, ano niya, napaka complex compared to the telephone today. Any sound causes the membrane and hence the magnetic arm to, to vibrate because we know that when a certain matter vibrate, there is the production of sounds. The movement of the magnet induces a fluctuating electric current in the coil and these electrical signals can be reconverted into sound by an identical apparatus at the other end of the circuit. And the incandescent lamp. In an incandescent lamp, an electric current flows through a thin tungsten wire coil called a filament. So you have there the filament, medyo, medyo napapalish na ang discovery in the modern times. The current hits the filament to about 3,000 degrees Celsius or that's equivalent to 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit, which causes it to emit both heat and light. The, the bulb must be filled with an inert gas to prevent the filament from burning out. For many years, incandescent lamps were filled with a mixture of nitrogen and, ni and argon. Recently, the gas krypton, little by little, there is a, a frequent changes in the composition of a certain lamp. Meron tayong incandescent lamp, meron tayong light bulb, fluorescent lamp. It allows the filament to operate at a higher temperature, with produ which produces a brighter light. It is because uh, the filament, in order to have a brighter light, the filament has to operate in its uh, optimum level or optimum degree of temperature. Okay, what about the microphone? Early radio programs depended on microphone. Even today, we are depending on a microphone. We are still using the microphone. Pero paliitan na. At times, naka-attach na lang siya. It's either naka-attach na lang sa neck or sa even sa ano lang, sa mga kwelyo na lang. Compared before, na parang kasing laki ng ulo natin ang microphone. Once sound is transformed into electrical energy, it may be amplified with relatively little distortion. Develop medyo ano tinatawag natin dyan in our vernacular gasagarak pa developed around 1875 the initial models of the microphone were bulky but frequently used because they represented an exciting new medium for communication uh, in this in that picture Lowell Thomas prepares for an invisible broadcast sa invisible broadcast pa itong ginagamit nila okay what about the handheld computer? The handheld compu computing device attests to the rem uh, remarkable miniaturization of computer hardware. The early computers of the 1940s, the time of Charles Babbage, uh, in was Inyak, is that, ano, sobrang lalaki pa. I a one computer almost occupies a one classroom, so large that they fill the entire rooms. Technological innovations such as the integrated circuits in the in generation of computer, we are now first generation, and this time we are now in the integrated circuit that we were able to hard to 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 polish our uh, computer na palit na handheld nisha. We have the laptop, the desktop na kaya na natin bit bitin. Okay, and the microprocessor in 1971. Strong computers, central processing units to the size of tiny silicon chips. Handheld computers are sometimes called personal digital assistants. Okay, let's proceed with the robotics. This robotic hand is capable of performing the delicate task of picking up and holding an egg without breaking it. Okay. A tactile array sensor located in the right half of its gripping mechanism sends information to the robot's control computer about the pressure the robotic hand exerts. Uh, in these modern times and up to this 21st century, we are glad that there is a massive development. We are encouraged in the scientific community the integration of robotics. Because it is... Uh, 
we are trying to embrace even those uh, some group of people some group of society is against that of industrial revolution 4.0 wherein the integration of information communication technology and other massive advanced technology that is about to release in the industry uh, lalo na sa field ng, ng pharmacology sa field ng biology genetic engineering they are against to, to that just like the the bacillus thuringiensis or this is a, a microorganisms uh, injected to that used in agricultural sectors sa, pla, sa pagtatanim wherein there is the the advantage just like in terms of the crop yield there is an increase of, of mataas yung yung na harvest then mas maaga siya with which favors especially those farmers these are just some of the the advantage advantages in this time in the 21st century at marami pang in, uh, marami pa and even robotics this time and itong in, in that picture the robotics has something to do with uh, there are parts na manual pa siya manually operated the feedback loop repeats continuously and enabling the robotic hand to stay in between the two extremes of dropping and crushing the egg and that in that uh, trial and error because science is actually a trial and error there is a medicine uh named 555 hanggang 6 na 5 and at uh, uh, na uh, pinangalan yun ng isang scientist uh, in the discovery of a uh, it's an antibiotic actually that is the times kung ka, ay ilang beses niya ginawa ang ang isang antibiotic na yun that it, in this example naman makikita nyo example in the picking up of an egg paano kina crush ang egg is being operated by a robot Okay, let's proceed with Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur is a French scientist. Louis Pasteur made important contributions to many scientific fields. During the mid-1800s, he is considered the founder of the field of microbiology. Working with the germ theory of disease to establish and explain the causes for many diseases. In 1857, he showed that microorganisms are responsible for food food spoilage. Siya rin ang naging kilala dun sa tinatawag natin na pasteurization. Or in other words, ang pag-init, ang pag -gaon. That is the reason why pag tinawag natin sa minasbat, eh, pag tinawag natin ang bahaw or not necessary man ang bahaw na may amoy na, <clears throat> pag ininit natin siya, there is, there is the restoration in the content of the food. At siya ang may sabi nun. That's the, that's the idea of Louis Pasteur. And sinabi niya that what causes the disease that it, that's inflected in our body, in our system, is made possible by microorganism. At sinabi niya rin that the uh, microorganism is really this responsible for the food spoliage. Yung tinatawag natin na Clostridium botulinum, that causes botulism. Or yung botulism na tinatawag natin, itun, pag, pag kumain tayo just like in, in uh, sa isda, sa dilata, yung tinatawag, uh, nagkaka na ano tayo nahuhudong or nah nalalason tayo ang usually the, uh, the bacterium under genus uh, clostridium yun nakaka nakakakos ng food spoilage yun ang nakakapanis napapanis yung mga pagkain natin that's clostridium botulinum okay let's proceed with Charles Darwin Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection became the foundation concept supporting the theory of evolution. Scientifically or biologically speaking, theory of evolution by means of natural selection is actually the foundation of biology. It is the backbone of biology. Darwin's theory holds that environmental effects led to varying degrees of reproductive success in individuals in groups of organisms. Ibig sabihin class, since uh, organisms are being classified into different group, ginaklassify kasi ang organisms as to the reproductive success. Ibig sabihin, just like for example, a mammal, ang reproductive success niya, it's either similarity siya or eto eteroparous. Anong eteroparous sa similarity? Ibig sabihin nun, an organism that can produce a single or 
rarely in rare times or paminsan-minsan nakakaproduce ng unusual number of offspring, nakakaproduce ng one offspring in a life cycle but ang kanyang, rep, ang kanyang life cycle naman is that matagal. Let's say, human, sabihin natin ang tao, ang pinaka, the natural birth or the natural uh, reproductive success ng tao ay isa lang dapat across the lifespan. Mahaba ang lifespan niya. Compared to other organisms, just like the agave plant, kung napapansin nyo, yung, uh, it, it resembles just like that of snake plant. Yung tumataas siya at may, uh, matinik yung, uh, sobrang matulis yung, yung end. Uh, let, later end, later end ng, ng leaves is that yun ang tinatawag natin agave plant. Ang agave plant, so once na nag-erect siya, tumaas siya ng tumaas and there's the tendency that it releases millions, thousands of offspring after niya mag-release ng thousands of offspring or meaning to say thousands of another organism, another form of agave plant is that after that namamatay na siya. Yun ang tinatawag natin na Eteroparus and Semelparus. Another example is that ang salmon or the, ang yung salmon, yung isda na salmon na tinatawag natin. Ang salmon class, once uh, to the viewers, once na, na, na nanganak na siya ng itlog, thousands, thousands ng itlog, after that, once the parent of, or the parent or the mother, secu- uh, there's the, the assurance that the rep- there is a reproductive success doon sa offspring na nire-release niya, right after that, namamatay sila. Even yung tinatawag natin yung housefly, yung lumilipad tuwing gabi, after nila mag-release ng thousands of offspring, after that, namamatay sila. Compared to other other uh, other mammals na they they were able to have an offspring one, one, once only, or they give birth once, but across the lifespan. Mahaba yung lifespan nila. That's the idea presented by Charles Darwin. And this revolutionary theory was published in 1859 in Darwin's famous treatise on the origin of species by means of natural selection. Yung ibig sabihin ng nat- by means of natural selection is that those organisms that is adopted to a certain harsh environment and we're able to adapt to the changes of time has the tendency or there is the bigger or there is a high tendency to survive ibig sabihin kahit anong kahit kakaibang environment man yan and you were able to adapt the changes of times there's the tendency that you were able to survive and produce new offspring okay so let's proceed with a with simon fraud in the late 19th century Venice neurolo- neurologist Simon Freud developed a theory of personality and a system of psychotherapy known as psychoanalysis. According to this theory, people are strongly influenced by unconscious forces, including innate sexual and aggressive drives. According to Simon Freud, we have this innate sexual and aggressive drives. That is why uh, he was able to coin the term uh, the, in the level of in the psychoanalytic theory that there is the tendency the so-called it was then emphasized during my college years that the so-called electric complex and the Oedipus complex or it is the tendency of a daughter to have a rival rival relationship with his father or his mother okay or there is an there is an intimate uh, feeling to to his father that is electro complex and Oedipus complex for the male one. In this 1938 British Broadcasting Corporation interview, Freud, Freud recounts the early resistance to his ideas in later acceptance of his work and Freud's speech is slurred because he was suffering from cancer of the jaw. He died in the following year. That is according to Simon Freud. Okay, so that's for lesson three.